welcome back to the Code Circus. Today we are going to look at creating our very first 3D environment and then getting that 3D environment up and loaded inside of Vizard. So there's a, a couple steps in this. It's going to take a little bit of time, at least 20, 30 minutes for you to go through all the steps yourself. We'll see how long it takes us to do the video. Let's dive right in and get started. So back to Vizard again. Uh, today we're gonna start by looking at the tools menu at the top here. So I'm gonna click on tools and there's something called the inspector. When I click on the inspector, I'm actually gonna start a new program. This new program is our three-dimensional model environment. And we need to find some three-dimensional models to pull into our environment. A great resource for that is a place called Sketchfab. So let's go and dive and look at Sketchfab. So this is what Sketchfab looks like. It's sketchfab.com, and I'll post the link for that in our video. Uh, you're gonna wanna set up an account. You can sign in, and I'm gonna log out just to show you how to do that. It's right here in the sign up. So we're gonna click sign up, join for free, and you can sign up using uh, Facebook or Google. I encourage you all to use your Google account and sign up using your Google account. Once you have that set up, we can sign in with Google. So I'm gonna sign in. And it's gonna pull me right into my account. Now, we could buy some stuff, but what we really wanna do is get to the free stuff. So we're gonna to go to explore and we want downloadable. And up here you see where it tells us um, the the licenses, we want stuff that is um, either Creative Commons, uh, any one of these will be fine. The standard license is the license that you have to pay for. So we're gonna go through and we wanna find an environment. So let's go and find a category. I'm gonna go with architecture because that is a good place to start for some kind of 3D environment that we wanna add into our world. Uh, let's say we want this study room scene. So I'm gonna click on that. Oh, that one's $16. I don't want that. I want the free ones. So I want the licenses to be by CC. Any one of these would be fine. Okay. And let's find something cool that we could do our environment in. Oh, that kind of looks cool. An abandoned building. That looks fun. Here's another abandoned building. You gotta be careful in multiple clicks because sometimes it gets you away from the free stuff. But let's see if we can get this. Yeah, so this one looks interesting. I don't know if I have an interior on it. I think I do. Let's see if there's an interior on this. Mm -hmm. It looks like, yeah, there's an inside. So I think that'll work great. So I'm gonna download this old shop. Now, when you download it, we want the GLT F version. It's highlighted for you automatically, but this is the version we want to download. And we want to save it in a folder on our computer. So I'm going to go into my Code Circus folder and I'm going to create a folder in here. I'm just going to call it Wizard. And this is where I'm going to put my files. And I'm going to create a new folder in here for my first project in here. I'm going to call it the sandbox. And this is a word we use in code often when we're talking about a place where we're just going to kind of play around, like playing around in the sandbox. So I'm going to save this. Notice it is a zip file. 
that'll download. It takes about three minutes. One thing I do need to say while this is downloading, when you're downloading something that is Creative Commons, you have to make sure that you credit the creator. And you can do that just by copying the credits here. And now anytime you post this project, you wanna send those credits along with the project, either in a description file, or we can put it in as a comment, and I'll show you how to do that. But it's important that you put those into your projects, so that way people know where this came from. So you wanna make sure that you copy that information and save it maybe in a notepad file. So I'm just gonna do a notepad file while this is downloading, paste this in, and then just save it in my files. I'll go back to my wizard folder and in my sandbox, I'm just gonna save this as um, my environment. and CC license. Okay, so now it is saved for me, and that way I have it, and I don't have to worry about going to look for it later. It is saved for me. Now that I have downloaded the file, I can see there's a zip file now in my wizard sandbox folder that I created. And I'm just gonna extract that um, using the extract all button that is on the browser, not WinZip. I'm just extract all of that. And it pulls out all those files for me. Now the file that I want is the one that's gonna be called CGLTF but all the other files are important. Notice that it also included the license in here for us. So I didn't even have to download that. It actually included the license inside the folder. So that's fantastic. I'm gonna go back to the wizard inspector and I'm going to go and add in my sandbox project. my scene. And it's gonna import it and add it right into my project for me. It takes a minute or two. Okay, and now it is right there. There's my three-dimensional model. If I wanna navigate my model a little bit, I can use my mouse and I can zoom in with it just by clicking on it that allows me to zoom in on different parts. You see there's different parts I can zoom in just by clicking onto these different spots. The glass, I can probably look on the inside. These are all just different names, different things. I can also use two fingers and kind of stretch. And there's, I'm gonna stretch right in through the wall. And I can kind of look around now inside the room. Uh, and I encourage you to use your mouse to kind of start getting used to navigating around in this environment because we have to get comfortable doing that and it'll be important for you to do that as we start adding things into our 3D environment. Now, when we add things to our 3D environment, one of the important things is we have to make sure that we set the scale of our environment and the location of everything that comes into our environment in the right spot. So we're gonna add in a character into our environment and make sure that our environment is scaled right and positioned correctly. So when we add anything else new, any character or anything else new, it comes into the environment where we want it to go. So let's go and find a character to add. To do that, you have to go into the, the wizard samples. So we're gonna go click on add, but then I'm gonna browse in my C drive to the program files, and I'm gonna go and look for wizard. There it is. It's called World Viz, it's actually the folder name and then in there is Wizard 7, and in here we have 
some examples and some resources. If I look at the examples, I can see the avatars and I can see some different things in there. I want to go into the resources, I believe. And I want to scroll down and I want to look for my person that I want to add. And there he is, the VCC male, or the VCC female. You choose whichever one you want. I'm going to do the VCC male, and it's the VCC male.cfg file is what I'm looking for. So I'm going to click that, and we're going to click open, and um, yeah, it doesn't look like he added, does it? Where did my character go? He's not on the screen. But if I scroll down in this window over here on the left, I can see there is something here called the VCC mail. And when I click it, I can see what looks like a little box that appeared. Well, if I kind of move around in my environment a little bit, I can see there he is. He's kind of tiny. He's under the counter and really super tiny. That's not the right position or size for this. So. I need to go up to my scene and I need to make my scene smaller so that way my character looks like he fits into the room. To make the scene smaller, I have to do two things. First, up here in the upper top of your screen, let me see if I can, if I zoom in on this a little bit, does this help? No, that doesn't help. Okay. Upper top of your screen, there is what looks like a gray box with an arrow in it. You want to click that. We also want to make sure we're clicked on our scene itself. On the left hand side where it says scene GLFT. Underneath there's something called the Sketchfab model. You want to click on that. And you'll see now that if we're clicked on that and we have our X, Y, and Z, we can now use these blocks down here, you see these as they light up different colors? I can shrink the scale of my environment using these tools. To make it shrink, I want to make sure my mouse is highlighted on the one that lights up all three directions in the yellow color. Now remember, to get to this, we want to click on the tool that has the gray box and the up arrow and the down arrow for non-uniform scale, that means you can change different sizes, or just the up arrow for the uniform scale. So we want the uniform scale because we want everything to shrink the same way. And then I'm just going to use my two fingers on my mouse pad and I'm going to shrink the scale of it down. Now I might have to zoom in a little bit again just to kind of find my character here. Make sure I'm a Sketchfab model, and I want to shrink this down. There we go. Shrinking them down. Again, look at, get, find my character again. Where would he go? Sometimes we may have to click on our character again just to get him. And you can see he looks a little bit bigger now, right? He's starting to look a little better. I'm going to go and click on my Sketchfab model again, and we want to change the scale of this again. Make sure you're changing the scale the right thing. The Sketchfab model, and I'm going to shrink it down again. And I'm going to play with this for a couple minutes until I get it to the right size. Let me do that. Now you can see I've gotten pretty close. One of the things that you can do if, if you're having difficulty with doing this is up here at the top where it says X, Y, and Z, you can actually type in numbers for this. So one is the same scale as it is. If I want to make it bigger or smaller, I would type in a number bigger than one to make it bigger and a number smaller than one to make it smaller. I just have to make sure I type in the same number in all three X, Y, and Z. So that way all three proportions shrink. So if I, for example, want to make this whole thing just a little bit smaller, I could type in 0.9 in all three of these, and I can see it's starting to shrink. And now I'm going to go back and find my character. I kind of lost him a little bit. Sometimes you have to zoom around and look around for him. There he is. That looks pretty good to me. I mean, it's not 
perfect, but I think it looks pretty good. He fits um, properly in the room. Now, the other thing is it looks like he's kind of cut in half by the counter. I really don't want him to start there. So I'm going to position now my entire world. Again, I'm not moving the character. I'm moving the world around the character. To do that, there is a tool next to the mouse button at the top called Translate, and it looks like four arrows together. And you notice when I click that, my tools down here change. And instead of being boxes, they kind of just start being arrows. So if I click on the arrow and just use my mouse, I can move the environment just a little bit and get my character to kind of be in a better spot. Now notice his feet are kind of below the environment, so I'm going to kind of bring him up a little bit. There we go. So now he is in the whole room. The, it, he looks maybe a little bit big for the environment, so maybe I'll just make him a little bit smaller. And I can just make this 0.9. And let's see how that did. Oops, wrong way. Let's do 1.3. See how that does. Okay, I think that's great. He looks great. I think I got it perfect. Now I can see that he is in the environment. Oh, he's he's still kind of cut off by the counter a little bit, so maybe I want to move him a little bit further forward by moving the background. Environment backwards. So now we have created a spot for our character to come into the world. So now any other character that we add, if I add in, let's say, the VCC female character she will go to the same spot. There she is. And you can see she's in exactly the same spot as the male character. They're all entering in at the same place. Now, depending upon your characters, you might have to modify your character a little bit. But let's say we wanted to get rid of this male character. I would just go down here to the male, and I would just delete it. And now we just have the female on the screen. And you notice, she is positioned right where we want her. Her feet are in the right spot. She looks about the right size. So now that we have that done, the next thing is going to be to position this so it actually makes the code work. Fortunately for you, I have given you the code to make our first environment work, and it is pretty easy to do. So we're going to do that by looking at our course management system and opening up that code. But before we do that, we have to make sure we save our scene here. So I'm going to delete, um, I'll actually I'll leave her. I'll leave her sitting in our scene, but you could delete her if you wanted to. I'm going to save my scene now, save as, and it's an open scene graphic files. And I'm going to make sure I'm saving it into my sandbox. I don't want to save it into the abandoned building folder within the sandbox. I just want to save it by itself and I can call it scene if you wanted to, but I think I want to call it the sandbox scene. So now I have saved my sandbox scene. Knowing how you named that file is really important. And one thing you can do is you can go right into the folder itself and you can see there's the name of the folder and you can copy that name and often I'll go through and use the rename tool and just kind of copy that file name and that way I have it and it is saved for me. Okay, let's talk about the code now. It's going to be a little bit different for everybody because everybody's file is going to be named differently but we're going to go up to here and we're going to cre create a new wizard file. And I'm going to save this because it's important to save it. It's a Python file. And I'm going to go into my folder, my wizard folder, same spot I've been saving things, into my sandbox, and I'm just going to call this the sandbox. .py. And now we have our first file. Remember, the file name I copied, I'm just pasting that there, so that way I have it handy right away. Let me zoom in on my screen a little bit so you guys can see all of this typed in here. Okay. 
Great, that's a little bit better for you to see. And you can see I just pasted that in there for me to save. Now the code I need in order to make um, my first project work is I have to import the Vizard library. We'll talk a lot more about libraries later on, but the, the library allows us to use code that somebody else wrote for us. So I'm gonna go and import, just by typing import viz, and that gets everything I need for the Vizard library. And then I also have to import viz fx, um, that's for lighting and things like that. We'll talk more about lighting in a later video. And then to make it work, I have to type viz.go. And that'll make the whole thing go. But I have to add in my environment into my wizard world. So to do that, I'm going to type in env equals vizfx dot add child and now all I have to do is put the name of the file as long as my sandbox scene is saved into the same folder as my sandbox file I just have to put the name of the file and I'm going to use quotes around it single quotes Oops, one little typo. I forgot to take out, as, as you can see, I forgot to take out this word, the sandbox scene that I had saved in there just so I didn't forget the name. I'm gonna take that out, and I think I have a capital Z there. I want a lowercase c. There we go, that's better. Get rid of that extra line. And now, when I hit go, we have our wizard file running. Let me zoom this to a wider view. It takes a minute to load. And now you can see we have our 3D environment and I can use the mouse to move around here. Again, it's something you're going to have to get used to. A click and a push forward with the mouse will move you forward in the environment. A click and a pull backwards will move you backwards in the environment. A left and right will have you turn left and right. If you do a right click and down, it moves you down in the environment. A right click and push up and moves you up and in the environment. So we can kind of use some clicks and left clicks to kind of, and right clicks to get us to kind of move all around. I, again, I definitely encourage you to experiment and move around in your environment to see what is going on. So that is our whole sandbox created with our character. That's all we wanted to do for today. I know that was a lot. Hopefully you get this up and working and I will see you next time.